this video I'll show you how to use the analog read and write features of the Jetduino and how to use the Grove OLED display to write out data. If you've not already watched the video on how to set up the Jetduino, then please look at that first if you want to follow along. The Jetduino has a built-in shield for the Arduino Do, and it communicates with the Jetson using the Gen I2C line. This allows you to read in values from the 12 analog pins of the Jetduino. The shield has 4 analog Grove connectors and 12 analog 3-pin Robot Geek connectors. You can also perform an analog write to any of the pulse width modulation digital lines. We'll start by seeing how to read in an analog value using a Robot Geek potentiometer and then how to write out an analog value using the pulse width modulation to control the brightness of an LED. First, let's connect up the potentiometer to the A0 line. This is a Robot Geek potentiometer. Please note that this is polarized and it has the black line as the ground. And that needs to go up top on the board. And then let's open up the Jetduino software Python folder. Then open the Grove Analog Read script. So the first thing we do is import our Jetduino module and its pins. Then we set our sensor pin to be A0. We set that to be an input pin using the pin mode method. Then we start up a while loop. We read in the analog value, which is converted from uh, our analog, you know, from 0 to 3.3 .3 volts is converted from 0 to 1023, which is a 10-bit input. If the sensor reading is valid, then we print it out. Then we sleep. And that's it. Now, let's start up a terminal. And then move into our Jetduino Python folder. Then we're going to run the Grove Analog Read script as a root user. So now as we turn our knob, we get values between 0 and 1023. One of the cool things about the Arduino Do is that it's capable of 12-bit read resolution instead of the standard 10 bits of the Uno and Mega. So let's modify this script to use 12 bits for the read instead of 10. Go back here and then after we do our pin mode, we're going to say Jetduino set analog read resolution and we're going to set it to 12. Let's save that. And go back and rerun this. Now when we move it, we're starting at zero and we go all the way up to 4095. So now we're at 12 bits resolution. Now let's move over and look at the analog write functionality. First let's plug a Grove LED module into the D4 connector then we'll open the Grove LED Fade script. In this script, we first import our Jetduino, then we assign our LED to D4, set it to be an output, then we have a while loop, and we have a variable i that loops between, that cycles between 0 and 255. We print it out and we do an analog write to change the brightness of the LED. Uh, then we sleep and we cycle over and do the whole thing over again. So open up another terminal. Then we'll run this as a root user.
And then as you can see, our LED now goes from fully dim to fully bright. Next, I'd like to demonstrate something a little more advanced. Let's make a temperature sensor that prints out the current temperature in both Fahrenheit and Celsius to an OLED display. We'll use the Grove OLED and temperature modules to do this. Let's go ahead and first remove the potentiometer and LED from the last example. Then we'll place the temperature module in the A0 connector. and the OLED in the Gen 2 I2C connector. Now within the Python folder, let's go into the Grove I2C OLED 12864 folder. Within this folder, there's a library that controls the OLED. You can see it here. I'm not going to go into details on the library itself. It gives you methods for writing out text to the OLED display. The main thing I wanted you to see here is that you could pick what SMBUS line you want to use, Gen 1, Gen 2, or Power. And for right now, we're just going to go with the default Gen 2. Next, let's open up the Grove OLED temp file. So within this file, one of the first things we do is import some modules, time, math, our OLED module, Jetduino, and Jetduino pins. Then we assign our sensor as A0. We initialize the OLED, clear it, and then do some configuration for it. Then next, we want to print out the label that we're going to have up on top. So the first thing we do is call set text XY. And this positions where you're going to write your text out in column row format. Then we're going to put, use the put string method to actually write out our text. And we're going to have temperature on top. Then next we want to set the analog read resolution to 10 bits. We start up a while loop. And then we read in the Celsius from our Jetduino using the temp command. And this is going to be based on what version of the temperature sensor you have. Then if the value has actually changed and it's greater than zero, then we want to, we're going to print to the console what the Celsius temperature is, convert it to Fahrenheit. Then we're going to move down to the next row and print out the Celsius value. Move down to the second row and print out the Fahrenheit value, store our Celsius value, and then sleep for a little bit. And that's all there is to it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, let's first go ahead and open up a terminal window. Then we're going to move into our Python folder. And into our OLED folder. Then we're going to run our temperature script as the root user. Alright, so now we've got temperatures printing out. And if we look on our OLED display, you can see the temperature now printed out on top. And as it changes, we can see the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit. One thing, it's not the most accurate temperature sensor. It's not really quite that hot in here but it is close. So with just two connections and a few lines of code, our Jetson is now reading in the temperature and writing it out to the display screen. So this tutorial has shown you the basics of how to read and write analog values with the Jetduino for the Jetson TK1. The Jetduino has 12 analog inputs that can work at 12-bit resolution and 12 pins capable of pulse width modulation with two dedicated to digital to analog pins with 12-bit resolution. So the Jetduino puts a lot of analog functionality at your fingertips. Please be sure to subscribe to my newsletter to be notified when more videos are available. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Thanks for watching.